Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. On today's program, Pastor Benny Hinn begins an uplifting and empowering message on worship, the key to entering God's presence from a Monday night service in California. Stay tuned for this important teaching. But first, before delivering the message, Pastor Benny shared an update on an amazing miracle which happened during a service the previous week for a woman who had been diagnosed with leukemia. I want to show you something that happened. Fantastic. Like, really something. Okay. Can we see it on the on the screen rise and be healed in the name of Jesus let faith arise in your soul now you feel something on it huh? in the name of Jesus he will touch you and make you whole. You speak English? Hmm? Jesus, oh Jesus. Jesus. Oh Jesus. You feel that? Yeah, you feel heat here? You feel heat also here, just here? Jesus. You feel strong now, stronger? Yeah, you feel stronger. Let's walk. Without, you, you had oxygen? Yes. Where is it? It's here. Let me see the oxygen. Pick up the key, please. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You, 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 you back up. I just wanted to see it. Back up, back up. Stretch your hands and pray. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I know I can feel it. Darling, I can feel it. I can feel the cancer. And God is burning it out of your body. You feel that? You feel that too right there, huh? Look at her laughing at me. Jesus, you feel that? You feel that here? Talk to me. You feel that? Oh, when I move my hand like that, huh? Yes. You feel that? Yes. Let go now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You feel that rub? Huh? You feel rub? Yes. Like the Lord rubbing? <laughs> describe. Can't describe. Can't describe. That's what happened to you a few weeks ago. Okay, let's walk. Stand up and give the Lord the biggest shout of hallelujah. That's her right there. See that? Look, look, look at the lady. Stand up, come here. Can we give the Lord a mighty hand, please? It's like, it's like unbelievable. That's the same girl. God has healed her completely. Give the Lord the biggest shot you can. Come on, people. I mean, the difference be between 
this face and the one we just saw. Look at you. What a God we serve. Oh, what a God. I don't know what to say. Well, just Jesus, that's all. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. You know, that's what I like about the Lord. Before and after. So when they told me, they said she's here, they said they've been crying watching her. Because they said, you can't believe the lady's face. It's the same girl with leukemia who came here last week. We were talking last Friday. Can we give him one more hand of praise? Look at you there. Look, look at you. Huh? Can you identify? Wait, wait, wait. Remain, all of you remain standing. Can you identify with that lady over there? I don't know her. The difference with your face a week ago. Anybody who doesn't believe in miracles is really blind. I mean, look at this and look at that one there. Last week she was dying. Now she's alive. Only, only, only the Lord can do that, huh? Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I rebuke that sickness and ghara. I rebuke that sickness in everyone else. I command that cancer to go. I command that healing to come. I command the demon spirit that has crippled Rada and your people be gone. Come on, people, pray. I'm feeling it. Be gone in Jesus' name. I want you to pray out loud like strong. In the name of the Lord, be gone. Be gone in Jesus' name. That's it. Be healed, Rada. Be healed, dear lady in Bermuda. Be healed, everyone else watching. In the name of the Son of God, Jesus, the Lord of heaven and earth. Jesus, who's alive. Jesus, who is Lord of all. Be healed in his name. Now lift your hands and ask him to heal you. Just say, Lord Jesus, heal me. Say, say, I give you my disease. I give you my cancer. I give you my sickness. I give you my arthritis. I give you my pain. I give you my leukemia or whatever disease you're fighting. Just give it to the Lord right now. In Jesus' name. All right, now, just gently, gently, gently. I want you, everyone now, to, to, to worship with me. Because as you do, that healing power will start flowing here, okay? On the people. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord. You sent your word. Healed my disease. You are the Lord. Pick up the key. Sing it one more time. You are the God. It's happening now. You that are watching, you're feeling God's power on you. As the people are thanking him for his word, his promise to heal, that he said he would, if you'll just simply give him your sickness. You sent your word and healed my disease. That's what he promised to do right now. And you're feeling that warmth on you. You're feeling that hot, like, like a heat. Once again, pick up the key. It's happening, Gara. You are the God. If you are feeling the healing touch of Jesus, Pastor Benny would like to hear from you on his personal email address, pastorbenny at bennyhen.org. And soon after this time of ministry in the service, he began a message which ties directly to having our needs met by entering the presence of God through worship. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. 
Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills are his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. He is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you'll hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Now, I want you to think about why God would finish this psalm with a negative. I'll tell you later, and i explain this later. But here we see a psalm of high importance, Yet when God finished it, he finished with, they shall not enter into my rest. I'll explain that later, but let me go on. Three things are associated with worship. Thanksgiving, praise, and then worship. Say thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Say praise. praise. Say worship. Now, we have to understand all three before we understand worship. We have to understand what thanksgiving is and why what praise is and why, and then how we enter into worship. Thanksgiving, praise, and worship are different from each other. Because we thank God for what He does. We praise God for His great acts. But we worship Him for His holiness. The hardest to understand is holiness because it has no parallel on earth. If I said God is powerful, you can relate because you've, you've, you've seen power demonstrated, whether in people getting healed. I mean, this is power here tonight, okay? We can relate to, to power because we've seen someone healed. We've seen somebody get out of, out of a wheelchair, whatever, or, or God's power in our life. But the minute somebody says God is holy, there is no demonstration on earth of holiness. So we cannot relate. What is holy? What does it mean? I can understand God is wise. I can understand he's great. I can understand he's powerful. And a whole lot more of his attributes, I can get it. But when somebody says God is holy, I don't get it. Because there's no parallel on the earth. you got to get this now. Hear me and keep listening very, very intently. Worship is something completely different from thanksgiving or praise. Turn to Psalm 100. Psalm 100. The Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. I'm reading Psalm 100 now. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us. Not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Then verse 4 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endures to all generations. It says nothing about worship. It just mentions two things, thanksgiving and praise. It says what? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So we all understand that we cannot enter into worship unless we go through a process called what? We have to go through the gate of thanksgiving, and we have to pass the courts of praise. Now, you got to understand this can get a little complicated, but it really isn't. So I don't want to mess you up. But when you study the tabernacle, you discover that worship is impossible in the courts. 
and impossible in the holy place. It's only possible in the holy of holies. Therefore, you have to pass what? You have to pass the gate. That is where thanksgiving explodes. When you meet Jesus, he is the gate. Then you have to pass the altar of sacrifice. That's the work of Calvary. And by the time you pass the laver, you explode with praise. Because it's still in the court. The court has three things. Gate, altar of sacrifice, laver. That's all that's in the court. Are you still there? Yes. So the gate is Christ. He's the gate. He's the way. The minute you are saved, you've entered through the gates. So when the Bible says enter into his gates, it doesn't mean enter into your church or a building. You enter into Christianity. You enter into Christ. You come into Christ in the experience of salvation with thanksgiving. Now, when you begin to experience the work of Calvary and the power of his word, you praise. You are wrapped with praise. But then there is, a, there is an experience deeper than that called worship. But for worship, you have to experience the light of the world and the bread of life before you can worship. Because what is worship? Worship is the altar of incense. I know this must, must uh, confuse some of you who don't know the Bible. But you have the gate, the altar of sacrifice, the laver. Once you go into the holy place, you look to your left, you have a lampstand. You look to your right, you have a, a table called the, the, the table of his presence or showbread. Showbread means his presence, okay? Then you look straight, be, right before you enter into the Holy of Holies, there stands before you an altar of incense. That is when worship erupts. So I cannot worship until I experience Jesus. Salvation, the work of Calvary, the altar of sacrifice, the power of his word in, in, my, in my life. Then I have to experience him as the light of the world who illuminates my mind and renews my mind. No, nobody can praise with a filthy mind. No, nobody can worship with a filthy mind. You get it? Your mind got to be cleansed. So you meet him. He cleanses your life with the blood. Then his word begins to fill you and wash you, cleanse you. But now your mind has to be renewed. It's the word that renews your mind. That's the next step. That's that lampstand. But something else happens after your mind is renewed. And, and the word renews the mind. Jesus leads you to the cross. The cross leads you to the word. And the word leads you to the light. Simple, really, for me anyways. And now you are renewed in your mind. After your mind is renewed, you begin to feast on the Lord. You begin to partake of the Lord. Are you listening? Because he's now the bread of life. But the next thing that happens is worship. So, we enter the gates with thanksgiving, as we get closer, and now we pass the altar of sacrifice, and we come to the laver, we begin to praise. Because praise is the result of the Word. The Word produces praise. Salvation produces thanksgiving, but the Word produces praise. Now, there's an amazing scripture in Isaiah 6 that is so holy to me. I, I would like you to put it on the screen, Isaiah chapter 6. And in Isaiah chapter 6, we see something magnificent in the first portion of that chapter. We see uh, Isaiah having a vision. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, his train filled the temple, or, or the robe, his robe. like a, His train means the end of his robe, like the bride coming down a, an aisle for a wedding. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. 
With two he covered his feet, with two he flew. Now what did these angels do? They worshipped. Because nobody can say holy, holy, holy unless they are worshipping. There's something magnificent about this, and I think very revealing. These angels had six wings. Notice where their wings were. With two they covered what? Their face. With two they covered their feet. That's worship. That's what worship is all about. When Elijah covered his face in Horeb, why would he cover his face? He worshipped. Because worship is intimacy with the Lord. But he flew with two. What's flying? Service. Therefore, worship leads us to service. You, you cannot serve till you worship. Worship leads people into ministry. Very few people worship because they don't really understand worship. Worship is a very powerful experience in the Holy Ghost. Anyone can thank the Lord for what he's done in your life. And anyone can praise when you just look at the stars or the moon or the world or creation. But there's a deeper experience. Get ready for it because God is about to show it to you. Are you ready? Lift your hands and say, Father, I'm ready. Tomorrow, Pastor Benny will conclude his message on how to worship our Heavenly Father and enter His presence so we can hear His voice, obey His commands, and access His promises. Don't miss tomorrow's program. God's Word Speaks Healing is a unique audio compilation on which Pastor Benny Hinn reads promises of health and wholeness from throughout the scriptures as beautiful instrumental music from his favorite healing songs and hymns plays in the background. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. You can have God's Word Speaks Healing as a digital download for a gift of $8. Call, write, or order your copy of this faith-building volume online today. Dear partners, I am so happy to have this opportunity to tell you something that has been in my spirit all day today on This Is Your Day. You know, as I listen to Pastor Benny teach and preach the Word of God with such fire and anointing and power, I'm often reminded of the simplicity of the gospel. You know, when you think of the Word of God, scriptures that talk about the simplicity of the gospel are so important. I mean, Luke chapter 18 and verse 17, that has to be one of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible where Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. You know, anytime I'm going to be on a program with children, I always say, please let me go before them because once the children are on stage, nobody's listening to anything else. People pay attention to children because of their simple love, because of how passionate they can be. Think through the word of God, how many times Jesus talked about children. Suffer the little children to come to me. Jesus said, except we become like little children, we couldn't even enter the kingdom of heaven. Why, he even used a child one day with fish and loaves of bread to feed a multitude. Jesus, we sang it as kids growing up, loves the little children of the world. Well, you know, as a dad of four and as a grandfather of nine grandchildren now, my territory is expanding and enlarging. Recently, I had a birthday. And one of my little granddaughters, she was standing off to the side while everybody was bringing me their gifts and, you know, all of the family singing and birthday cake and all of that celebration. And at the very end, I noticed she seemed like she was trying to get through everybody and get to me. And when she got to me, she held up a little piece of paper, the most simple drawing, misspelled words, but with hearts all over them, telling me how much she loved me and happy birthday. Her eyes were just wide with excitement, waiting for my reaction. Now here I had received other gifts, but she said these words to me, 
it's the best one, isn't it? And I said, yes, it is. It's the best gift anybody could ever give me. Do you know that I believe that's the way our father is? When you sow into the kingdom of God, and you have that passion and you have that faith and you have that love, just like a little child that you're presenting it to your father. You're giving it to your daddy. You're telling him how much you love him. I believe the same passion that I expressed to my little granddaughter the other day. This is the best. The joy that filled her heart when I acknowledged that. Friends, I want you to know uh, that there is a way, there is a way to please God. And it is when we obey his word and we become just like a little child that comes before him. You don't have to impress God with fancy words or you don't have to impress God being out of your own character, but just humbly and simply come before God. And when you bring your gift right here to this is your day to Pastor Benny Hinn so that gospel can go all around the world. You know, I've been blessed to travel with Pastor Benny for five or six years now and see the gospel taken around the world, miracles, signs, and wonders. And I believe that our Father just is looking down from heaven as you and I say, Pastor Benny, we're sowing seed into the kingdom of God. Every gift that you give, I want you just to picture your Father saying, that's the best of all. Whatever today God is placing on your heart to sow into the kingdom of God and right here at This Is Your Day, I know for sure Pastor Benny does not take it for granted, never one time, but he's constantly positioning and petitioning God with your prayer request and your needs. All of us here, we love you so much. And when you present that gift today to This Is Your Day, to Pastor Benny Hinn and the ministry that's going around the world, setting people free, sharing the simple gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, your father, your father in heaven is looking over and with beaming eyes, he's looking at you as that childlike faith when you present it to God. I want to encourage you today, pick up your phone and call right now. If we ever needed you to take the gospel with us around the world, if we ever needed your support, we need you right now. Please pick up the phone, call the number that's on your screen and whatever you present to dear Jesus today, I know his heart is going to be pleased with your gift. On behalf of Pastor Benny and all of us here at Benny Hinn Ministries, we truly love you with the love of Jesus. We declare that your greatest days are in front of you, and we thank you today for that childlike faith that you present to Jesus. Be blessed.